Section 1. The First Bite. Why Introductions Matter. We've all been there, standing at a party, holding a plate with something delicious on it. But no one wants a bite. Why? Maybe they can't see past your thumb covering most of the food. Maybe the lighting is bad. Your writing is like that party food. And the introduction is how you present it. A good introduction is like a warm invitation, a brightly lit room, a welcoming smile. It makes the reader want to take a bite, to delve deeper into what you have to say. Think about the last time you got hooked on a book. What was it about the beginning that drew you in? Was it a question, a surprising statement? Leave a comment below and tell me about a book that grabbed you from the first page. I'm always looking for new recommendations. Section two, setting the stage crafting section intros that shine. Each section of your writing is like a new room in a house. Imagine walking through a beautifully designed home, each room offering a unique experience. Just as you wouldn't want to enter a room without any context, your readers need a proper introduction to each section of your writing. You wouldn't just walk into a room without any context, would you? You need a doorway, a transition, a sense of arrival. This is where the magic of a well-crafted section introduction comes into play. You need a doorway, a transition, a sense of arrival. Think of it as setting the stage for what's to come, giving your readers a hint of the journey they're about to embark on. That's what a section introduction does. It sets the tone, provides context, and prepares the reader for the information or story that follows. But how do you write a compelling one? So how do you write a good one? Start with a question. A question piques the reader's curiosity. It promises an answer and engages them right from the start. A question piques the reader's curiosity. It promises an answer. It makes them want to keep reading. For instance, if you're writing about the benefits of meditation, your section intro might look like this. Feeling stressed and overwhelmed, you're not alone. It makes them want to keep reading. The question draws them in, creating a sense of anticipation and eagerness to find out more. For example, if you're writing about the benefits of meditation, your section intro might look like this. Feeling stressed and overwhelmed, you're not alone. Millions of people struggle with anxiety every day. But what if there was a simple natural way to find calm amidst the chaos? See how that works. Millions of people struggle with anxiety every day. This statement not only acknowledges a common problem, but also connects with the reader on an emotional level. But what if there was a simple, natural way to find calm amidst the chaos? See how that works? The question draws the reader in, and then you can smoothly transition into discussing meditation as a solution. The question draws the reader in, and then you can smoothly transition into discussing meditation as a solution. This approach not only engages the reader, but also sets the stage for the information you're about to present. But don't leave them hanging. Make sure to answer the question before moving on to the next section. This ensures that your readers feel satisfied and informed. Answer the question before moving on to the next section. Explain how meditation can help alleviate stress and provide a sense of peace. This not only provides value, but also reinforces the importance of the topic you're discussing. Explain how meditation can help alleviate stress and provide a sense of peace. By doing so, you create a seamless flow of information that keeps the reader engaged and interested. What are some of your favorite ways to transition between ideas in your writing? Do you use questions, anecdotes, or perhaps a surprising fact? Share your thoughts in the comments. Engaging with your readers not only builds a community, but also provides you with valuable feedback to improve your writing. Remember, a well-crafted section introduction is like a warm welcome. It invites your readers in, makes them feel at home, and prepares them for the journey ahead. So take your time, craft your intros with care, and watch your writing shine. Happy writing! Section 3. Asking the right questions. Engaging your reader's curiosity. Not all questions are created equal. A good question is relevant to the topic at hand. It's thought-provoking. It might even challenge the reader's assumptions, and it always makes them want to learn more. Let's say you're writing about the importance of exercise. Instead of asking a bland question like, do you exercise? Try something more engaging. What if you could add years to your life and feel more energetic every day? The answer might be simpler than you think. See the difference? The second question is more specific, more intriguing. It hints at the benefits of exercise without giving everything away. 
And of course, you'll want to answer the question fully and clearly before moving on. Have you ever read an article that left you with more questions than answers? Share your experiences in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Section 4. Calls to Action Turning Readers into Participants Have you ever finished a great book and felt a little lost? Like you wanted to stay in that world a little longer, but didn't know how? It's a common feeling, and it's one that writers and content creators can tap into. Imagine if you could offer your readers a way to extend their experience, to keep them engaged even after they've read the last word. A call to action is like offering your reader a map back to that world. It's an invitation to continue the journey, to explore further, and to become an active participant in the narrative. It could be as simple as asking them to leave a comment, share the article, or answer a question. These small actions can make a big difference in how connected your readers feel to your content. You can also use surveys to gather feedback and encourage interaction. Surveys are a great way to understand your audience better and to make them feel heard. For instance, you could write, What are your go-to stress-busting techniques? This not only invites your readers to share their thoughts, but also creates a sense of community as they see others' responses. Share your tips in the comments below. This simple call to action can spark a lively discussion and keep your readers engaged long after they've finished reading. Or, we're curious to know more about your reading habits. This kind of question can lead to valuable insights and make your readers feel valued. Take our quick survey and let us know what you think. Surveys can be a powerful tool for engagement, providing you with direct feedback and giving your readers a voice. Calls to action are a powerful way to keep the conversation going, even after the reader has finished your piece. They encourage readers to reflect on what they've read and to share their thoughts with others. They transform passive readers into active participants. By inviting your readers to take action, you're creating a more interactive and engaging experience. What are some of the most effective calls to action you've seen? Think about the ones that made you stop and engage, the ones that made you feel like a part of the conversation. Share your examples in the comments. Your insights could inspire others and help create a more vibrant and interactive community. Remember, the goal is to turn readers into participants. By crafting thoughtful and engaging calls to action, you can create a lasting connection with your audience. So, what are you waiting for? Start turning your readers into active participants today. Section 5. Wrapping it up. Leaving a lasting impression. Just like a good meal leaves you feeling satisfied, a strong conclusion should leave your reader with a sense of closure. It's the final taste that lingers, the last note in a symphony that resonates. A well-crafted ending can elevate the entire piece, making it memorable and impactful. But it should also spark further contemplation. It's not just about wrapping things up neatly. It's about leaving a lasting impression that encourages your reader to think deeply about the subject matter. One effective way to do this is to end with a thought-provoking question. Questions have a unique power to engage the mind, prompting readers to explore their own thoughts and feelings about the topic. This could be related to the main topic or a broader theme you explored. For instance, if your article was about environmental conservation, you might ask, what small changes can you make in your daily life to help protect our planet? The key is to leave your reader pondering your words long after they've finished reading. This lingering thought can transform a simple article into a catalyst for change or a source of inspiration. For example, you could conclude an article about creativity with, so what will you create today? The possibilities are endless. This not only wraps up your piece, but also invites the reader to take action, to apply what they've learned in a personal and meaningful way. 
or if you're writing about personal growth. The journey of self-discovery never truly ends, does it? This kind of ending acknowledges the ongoing nature of personal development and encourages readers to continue their journey. What steps will you take